Hi guys, bit of a strange week this week. Um, started off with uh, mum being track and traced. If you're not in the UK, our NHS track and trace system means that if somebody you've been in close contact with gets COVID, you get a telephone call and you're not allowed to basically leave the house for 14 days. Um, so that's what's happened. So I've been coming up here on my own and looking after the chickens and stuff, but the weather's been crap, basically. It's been really, really wet. So no filming done then and today I'm just going to be taking the beans down. So basically it's just been a bit of a long week and kind of real life has got in the way a bit. So I'm going to <laughs> show you what we did when we lifted the stones at the end of last week and uh, then I'm going to be taking the beans down. <laughs> This was the last bit of recording that mum and I did together before she was um, track and traced. Uh, so basically what we were doing was moving these blocks which make up the path in the fruit cage down to the other end of the plot. So we've had an incinerator at the other end of the plot that we used quite a lot during the summer as a kind of focal point because we used our allotment really quite a lot last year as a socialising area. Uh, because it was a safe outdoor space where we could all stay really far apart from each other and it worked really, really nicely. In fact, it was a bit of a godsend over the pretty depressing summer. And we would like to try and recreate something like that for the winter on our plot um, because I think it's going to be a pretty grim winter. But what we had as a focal point before was we have an incinerator at the bottom of the plot and the rules have changed now that you're not allowed to have incinerator fires or bonfires and so what we're going to do is remove the incinerator and build a barbecue down the bottom which will kind of replace it as that focal point and a bit of warmth. The blocks that I had laid down as the path inside the fruit cage were actually really thick heavy old blocks from um, storage heaters and so I'm going to swap over those blocks with what we've had as the surround for the incinerator, which are just paving slabs. Remake the part in the fruit cage with the paving slabs and then build the barbecue focus area down the other end out of the storage heater blocks. I think that'll work quite nicely because they're solid enough that I'll be able to use them for construction and it'll give us a bit of warmth during the winter. And we're going to also have a big old think about how we can set up shelter so with the rule of six that we've got, so only six people can really meet, we can probably have two other sets of pairs, you know, in the space. So we need to create three areas of shelter down at that end of the plot. And uh, then we'll be at least have somewhere to go during the winter that's not deathly depressing. That's the aim. Marvellous, isn't it, Pat? Fantastic. <laughs> 
Okay, mission complete. These are the blocks that are going to form the barbecue here when I get the incinerator out of the way. And these guys are the ones that are going to replace the path that we've just lifted from here. Knackered? Knackered. <laughs> maybe sometime. Ended up going with probably the simplest version, but I think it's gonna work really well. I'm gonna cut this grid round and we can have the barbecue on top. We can burn things underneath and there is loads of ventilation and I think it's gonna hold the warmth really nicely. Surprisingly, it hasn't actually been a bad year for figs. This is the second flush, so the first lot we had when it was really hot in the summer. And this lot, you tend to get a second flush later in the year if they get big enough. And although they're not as sweet and amazing as the first lot, these are really, really good for cooking with when they're this size, because they are ripe. They're just a little bit harder. Absolutely delicious. Well, in the polytunnel at the moment, the chilies are still going crazy black jalapenos are going to go we've got lemon drop chilies coming out of our ears at the moment they have been amazing i just think this is the best chili variety ever i love it it's prolific and they taste great we've also got quite a lot of where are they so these frigatello peppers are still coming they're looking really good still got loads of them and these ones are hot 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 and um that's about all that's really taking off in here, other than the new stuff that I've planted, like the chard, which is doing really, really well. Spring onions are trying to pick themselves up a bit. And the basil is over. Not the Thai basil. Thai basil is doing fine, but the normal basil. So I'm just going to pick off what's left of it, clear that out. I've got one more of those dinky chilies to move. Don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I moved some out that were in here that never really did anything this year. So I'm going to get them out and into the greenhouse and then that's going to clear me a big bit of space on this end of the polytunnel to get some of the seedlings in that I need to get in. So I still haven't got the Lucillus chard in that I was meant to get in weeks ago and now it's got really big so I've got to get that in today. And I've also got some American spinach to go in which I'm looking forward to because that's really really tasty and uh, we had a hard time with it trying to grow it in the summer because it just bolted so quickly so I've got my fingers crossed that it's going to do really well in here. Um, what else have I got to get in? I've got some lettuces to go in, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get them in today. We've got loads of seedlings that are sort of all coming up, looking really keen. Um, but some of them maybe just need a little bit more time, so I'm going to leave them in the greenhouse. Uh, there's just a bit more light in the greenhouse than there is uh, in our conservatory at home. So hopefully they're going to bolster up and get bit less leggy well, they're not going to get less leggy their legs aren't going to reduce are they but they'll kind of you know beef up a bit without just going searching for the light like they do at home so yeah I'm going to clear the chilies clear the basil plant these plant the American spinach and we'll be away
Okay, we are back to Sunday evening now. Um, it's actually, it's been raining for days, like I say, but um, it's actually a magnificent evening. The clocks went back um, yesterday, so my clock is telling me that it's half past four, but I think that's wrong. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna have to get on with what I'm doing because it's gonna be time to head home fairly shortly. So I'm just gonna take down the uh, French beans which looked like they were having a second flush. Do you remember we had really really crap time with beans this year? I mean it's been particularly the French beans it was appalling because we had uh, at the beginning same time as last year um, and then we had a really odd snap of really hot weather and they dried out and basically it's just been not a good year for them for us but they had a massive second flush in like really early September and so what had kind of been a bit of a written off year for the beans ended up being quite good in the sense of we got a huge amount just at the time when they on a normal year would have been finishing but now they really are finished and have a look I mean I know I keep going on about black fly but I don't know what's going on have a look at these guys pretty gross job that to be honest I mean it's a black fly massacre um, yeah I've never seen black fly like we've had it this year um, I know that uh, somebody a couple of weeks ago when I was whinging on about black fly said that it's to do with possibly too much nitrogen in the soil so I had a good old look through that and although it's true that um, the aphids always go for the part of the plant that has the most nitrogen that tends to be just the area of the plant that's growing fastest because that's um, so like the leaves or stems when they get a new flush of growth tends to be the nitrogen and so they're drawn to that for not necessarily it just its nitrogen content but just the fact that the cells are growing so fast they're nice and tender um, but some of that stuff I just tore off there was like gnarly, woody, you can't imagine there was any juice in it at all and still absolutely covered in um, aphids. So I am at a bit of a loss on the aphid front. This is normally when I'd be like, Mom, can you hold the camera for me while I do this? Sadly, that isn't going to happen today, so you're just going to have to put up with... Hmm, how am I going to do it with one hand? To go in like this.
I'm not going to be winning cinematographer of the year. I'm not going to be winning cinematographer of the year award, am I? Just while I'm in the fruit cage, I just show you I have actually laid the slabs down for the path in here, and don't worry, that's not a corpse. Bert has just fallen over. Yeah, so like I say guys, bit of a weird week. Um, there's now an aeroplane going over. Um, I'm glad I got the beans down because uh, that was really necessary, but please, anybody got any information about black fly? Rescue me from the black fly. It's extraordinary, it's just like everything's covered in it. Uh, very marvellous. So yeah, as well as um, mum being on lockdown and uh, me coming up here on my own all week, um, but we've also had other dramas, you know, because they always come together. So um, our fridge freezer broke down and it's in like a, um, a built-in alcove in the kitchen. And obviously when you buy the fridge, you just think, oh, well, it's a fridge. We'll put it in this alcove. We'll put a shelf over the top, whatever the hell. And then when it breaks down and you go to buy another one, it turns out you've bought the only fridge ever manufactured in the entire world in that size. And the only way you can possibly get another one is by buying some like 1200 quid fridge. It's about the only thing that's ever gonna fit in that hole. Um, so yeah, we've spent a lot of time hunting for um, unusual sized fridges. So <laughs> the exciting life we lead. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, a weird week. Haven't got a lot done. I'm gonna go home now because uh, it is about half past four. Um, although it's a beautiful evening up here, I was a bit enthusiastic about there being sunshine out, didn't bring a coat and it's a bit chilly. Yeah, so I'm going to head home for uh, a glass of wine, but before I go, I've got to pick a load of chard because I am making my I mean, I've got a lot of favourite dinners, like food in general is a bit of a favourite. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's chard lasagna tonight, so um, I've got to go around, pick a load of chard, and then I'm going to head off. Although it's turning out to be a really beautiful evening. We've got sort of the orange trees and everything growing, going up in that direction. Uh, I'm going to put all of that nasty black fly infested bean mess into the... What's it called? The compost bin. Uh, yeah, then I'm gonna head home.
enough, do you think? I'm sorry that was such a bizarre vlog this week, um, but I can tell you next week's vlog is going to be interesting. I don't know interesting in what sense because I'm going to have to get creative because this morning we got uh, mum's test results back and she has got COVID. So we are now locked in the house. I also can't go to the allotment. So there's going to be no plot for the next two weeks. Not sure how I'm going to do that on the vlog, but we will see. Um, don't worry about the chickens, they are being um, looked after by a fantastic woman who also has an allotment up there, so no worries there, they're going to be totally safe. Um, it's just sod's law that I've only just moved all the seedlings that were downstairs in the conservatory up to the greenhouse, but she's going to water them as well, so that's not too bad. The only thing that is a bit of a problem is that like this week I was planning to do quite a lot, as in get the field beans in. But I'm hoping that in two weeks time, I mean touch wood if um, I don't get it either, which I probably will to be honest because like if mum's got it I'm going to get it. Um, so yeah, that is the status of things. We are now basically under house arrest, we can't go out. So the next week's vlog is going to be, I've got no idea basically. What I can update you on though is do you remember last week I was saying that it might be quite interesting to kind of pool our knowledge in terms of the best varieties around? Had quite a unanimous, I think is the right word, response to the pumpkin question I asked last week. Um, there were some clear favourites out there and when that happens you can kind of trust that they're going to be the best ones out there. Had a lot of people agreeing with me that Crown Prince is an absolute joy. The other one that's cropped up an awful lot in comments under here, comments in Instagram, and basically I've seen everybody growing it for the last two years, except me, is Uchiki Kuri. So Kuri is a type of squash, there's quite a lot of them. Red Kuri, the onion squash, also was mentioned. But that Uchiki Kuri one uh, seems to be everywhere and people are raving about it. So if it's not a fad, I suspect that is a particularly fine pumpkin as well. So that's gonna go on the list. Somebody also mentioned gem squash uh, in the comments and I had completely forgotten about gem squash. I grew that about two years ago, maybe three years ago, and it was a brilliant little squash. I don't know why I haven't grown it since. So round, sort of large cricket ball sized squash. They were really, really hard like a pumpkin, but looked like a courgette, you know, with the dark green skin. And I didn't really know what to do with them. I was given the plants and I asked a friend of mine whose mum is South African and she said well they're grown everywhere in South Africa and they're really popular and I guess all over the place they're really popular and what she told me to do was just chop the thing in half so it's two cups stick it straight in the oven with uh, butter in it and bake it and I can give you the review that it was incredible so why haven't I grown it the last couple of years I've got no idea this is part of the reason that having Instagram and doing this and YouTube and having the blog and everything is actually incredibly useful because from year to year, unless you really, really write incredibly detailed notes, which I'm just not that good at doing, you forget things year to year. So um, yeah, that's pretty good. So they're going on the list. Two other small squash were mentioned, which were honey bear and baby bear. I haven't looked either of them up actually, but I had um, two mentions of the honey bear so I'm guessing that they're probably a really good and quite a tiny tiny squash and one that was really interesting that I've never heard of before was called shark's fin melon but it is a winter squash I'm assured so I'm gonna look that one up and get that one on the list because um, they said it was better than a crown prince so I'm going to write all of them up. Seems I am not going to be short of time in the coming week. Seems that my main occupation, uh, the garden, is out the window and obviously I can't go to work either so I am going to be trapped indoors. So probably quite a lot of stuff is going to be going on the website this week. <laughs> I have a list a mile long of things that I want to do so hopefully some of that will get done. 
So what I'm going to do is start drawing up my own grow list for 2021, which will start off pretty slim. And then by the time we hit sort of March, April, when we're really getting into the growing of things, um, it'll probably be a mile long. But at the moment, I'm just going to put the things that I'm really, really sure about. And I'm also going to write up the recommendations that I get from you guys or ones that I kind of get recommended more than once. So you know that they're going to be pretty good. Um, I'm going to write up in a list in a kind of a little database on the website so that if anybody's interested they can go there and have a look. Um, <coughs> I hope that's not COVID. <coughs> but on that note, so we've done pumpkins or I've started on pumpkins. If you've got any more suggestions either DM me on Instagram to get them onto the list or just let me know on here and we'll start building up some really quality database collectively. If you do go to the website to have a look at the lists, I will make them commentable so you'll be able to put notes underneath and we might be able to add them in and see what's going on. But anyway, basically I think what we could pull together collectively is a really useful resource on all these varieties. So is anybody trying to make any decisions at the moment about something to grow? Somebody asked me about beetroot, is that something you'd be interested in? Looking at, I mean, beetroot's one of those ones that has got so many varieties. Um, but if you've got anything specifically you, you would like us to focus on next week, um, drop a line underneath and we can get a master list together. So, yeah, sorry about the weird vlog. If I'm not sick next week, I will still try and put a vlog together, but it's going to be back to like the full... In fact, it's not even back to the full days of lockdown, because when we went through the first lockdown, all I was doing was getting up in the morning and going to the allotment, and then coming home at night. Like That was it. I spent my whole time. I am really alarmed by the fact that I'm going to have to spend the next 14 days minimum inside. I mean, we do have a tiny garden here which is probably going to look incredible by the end of the two weeks because I'm going to be spending a lot of time out there. But yeah, on that note, if you're interested in seeing how I cope being cooped up in the house for two weeks or more, uh, subscribe and you can watch me go slowly mad indoors over the next couple of weeks. Hopefully that's not going to be the case, but to be honest, I'm starting to feel a bit claustrophobic already and <laughs> I've only been inside for two days.